So, uh, my name is Tim Ray. I'm in the men's department here at Westall. And I wanted to give an introduction on turbulence modeling, um, how it's used in open foam, a little bit of an introduction on running open foam, and a little bit on actually developing in open foam. So, why is turbulence modeling necessary? The 3D uh, Navier Stokes equations cannot be solved exactly with our computational power today. Um, so instead, we'll use a turbulence model to simplify the flow. And what we'll do is we'll transform the flow into uh, mean flow variables. And doing this will greatly simplify the computation time. So what, so what it does is uh, this first picture is an instantaneous snapshot of a, a jet and a cross flow. And if you overlay a bunch of these snapshots, you'll get uh, this picture over here. So if we can solve for this mean quantity, uh, we'll greatly simplify our, our computational needs. Uh, so to do this, we'll decompose uh, instantaneous uh, flow fields in terms of a mean value and some uh, fluctuation from that mean value. And then we substitute these directly into the governing equations. And in doing this, we get out almost exactly the same thing, except our equations are in terms of the mean values. But the, an additional term appears, uh, and this term is the Reynolds stress tensor. So this is what turbulence modeling is all about. We've introduced a new unknown quantity, so we have to define this quantity. And the, sort of the question is, how do we do this? Uh, and what makes a good turbulence model? Uh, Eddy viscosity models are probably the most commonly used models today. Uh, they rely on this Boson-esque approximation where the tensor is now redefined as a scalar quantity, uh, Eddy viscosity here. So we've reduced our tensor into a scalar, but now we still have to define that scalar quantity. And this approximation is analogous to Stokes' theorem. So it's OK for equilibrium flows, but past that, uh, you get some gray area. So any viscosity models, there's you know, hundreds out there in literature. And open foam uh, comes with about 17 of these eddy viscosity models. Uh, and in addition to that, there's other capabilities in open foam, full round stress models. Uh, there's a few RANS, LES uh, hybrid models, LES simulations, and there is a DNS solver. I've never messed with it. But if you have all these options for all these eddy viscosity turbulence models, the question is sort of is which one's best, um, which one's best to use and why. So the two most widely used ones are the SST K Omega model and the spalar foam ross model. SST K omega uh, combines the K epsilon model with the K omega model. So in the free stream, you have a K epsilon uh, formulation. Uh, K epsilon has great free stream properties, but it fails near the walls. So near solid boundaries, the SST model switches to a K omega formulation. And this gives it near or good near solid boundary properties and good free stream properties. The one equation, SA model, uh, was derived from empiricism and dimensional analysis. So there's no real link to the Navier-Stokes equations. But it still does very well for uh, a, a wide number of flows, especially external aerodynamic flows. And it's much easier to implement one equation than two equations, and it's faster to solve also. So to give an idea of what these equations look like, uh, when I say two equations, it's solving two PDEs. And it's like a, a regular transport equation. There's a convection term, diffusion, and a, some source and sink terms. And the same thing with the omega equation. And there's additionally nine model coefficients that are calibrated to some uh, simple turbulent flows and four other algebraic equations that I'm not showing here. The SA model is a little bit more simple than that. It's one equation. It has the 
same sort of formula of convection, diffusion, um, and source and sink terms. And this model has about 10 model coefficients and five auxiliary functions. The, the problem is that I showed you the SA turbulence model. Um, and you might think that that is the SA turbulence model. I showed that standard SA turbulence model. And if you go to this great website, the National Energy Turbulence Modeling Resource, there are a ton of different specialized SA turbulence models. Um, so you might think that the standard SA turbulence model is what you'll see in almost all codes, but that's not true. And in open foam, unfortunately, the SA FB3 model is what comes with open foam. And this model is, I'll quote from the website, is not recommended because of unusual transition behavior at low Reynolds numbers. And unfortunately, coding of this version still persists. So since open foam is open source, it's very easy to modify. Uh, why don't we go through and make the modification to an acceptable SA turbulence model, the SA no FT2 turbulence model. And you can do this very easily. You don't need any C++ background. Um, and I'll go through the procedure here. So first, we're going to copy the source files uh, that come with open foam to you know, some other location. Uh, so there's just two, two files, the .c file and the header file. So we just copy those. We can get rid of this, this dependency file because we'll create our own later. And then we'll go through and rename the Spellar Palmeros to whatever our model's going to be. So I chose Spellar Palmeros, no FT2. And you literally just control F, find every Spellar Palmeros, and rename it. Spot on Ross, no FT2. So that's some of the cases that are shown here. So we haven't made any changes to the equations. We've just sort of renamed everything to make it our own model. Here we can go through and make the modifications to the model. So first, get rid of this FB3 <coughs> function. We don't need it anymore. And then there's just two minor changes to the FB2 equation. So before, you know, it's pretty easy to read. We had a 1 divided by this quantity cubed, and we're changing it to 1 minus this quantity. Uh, we're cheating at, at B1 we were defined earlier, and they have the same definition in both models. So it's just a very simple modification, and the same sort of modification down here. We have to get rid of our FB3 term, term and make a few simple modifications. So now the model has the correct equations, has the correct names, we're ready to go through and compile it. Um, so you'll need two files, uh, a list, this is by list, it's a list of what files we want compiled and our options. Uh, it's like uh, what files are necessary to actually compile it. So we'll tell OpenFoam this is the model we're going to compile our new model, and we're going to put it in our, our own personal library, my incompressible models. And then to compile, it's just a simple command, w make lipso, or w make depend on what open phone version you're in. But if it all compiles correctly, you're ready to run an open phone case. So running open phone, you require uh, just a regular case folder, you require three folders. Uh, this is initial and boundary conditions. This will hold your mesh and uh, some uh, other constant quantities like uh, viscosity, transport quantities. And system is uh, solver settings, discretization schemes, and such. Uh, so these three are required. In addition to that, I like including like time zero dot original so I don't screw up my boundary conditions or accidentally make some change. If I'm starting, if I'm not making many changes, I'll start from a later time, so it's already mostly converged, and I just make a little change. I don't have to start from time zero every time. I can start from iteration 1000 or something like that. And post-processing is where, after you sample some little properties, it might, it will get pushed into that folder. So 
So we need to let OpenFoam know that we're using our own personal library that we compiled. So it's just one um, additional line that we add to the control dict file, which is in the system folder. So we're telling it to import the library we just compiled by compressible models. And then we'll go to uh, this file, RES properties, where we actually list what turbulence model we want to use. So we want to use our new Spaller Almaraz, no FT2 model. And then depending on what case uh, you're running, you'll run your solver. So I was running the incompressible aerodynamic, I'll run simple foam. And um, so I ran simple foam, um, and this is, I ran it on a simple flat plate subsonic, and this is a plot of skin friction versus the Reynolds number along the plate. So we have our, our modified SA equation compared to two other turbulence models, the SSTK omega, and then the R equation is a turbulence model we're developing in the CFD lab. So we can see our implementation was all correct and everything's working great. And we can share this library with other people in the lab. And these are two velocity uh, profiles at two stations along the plate. Again, all of the models agree very well um, because it's such a simple flow case.